Hello and welcome back. I feel like I feel like it's very dark in here. Oh, hold on, hold on, let's check. I feel like maybe I have a light out, but I don't. I guess we could turn this on. Let's work on lighting at JMRL's place. Okay, I don't know, I don't think that's gonna help. Anyway, kitchen's feeling especially dark today. Don't know why, must be where the sun is. So, water's a Russian. I'm getting ready to put probably eight to 10 pounds of some of the last of the pasture-raised ground beef I had in the freezer in my roaster oven. We are doing about 20 healthy freezer meals. So we've got about six instant pot or slow cooker, depends on any, any way you wanna cook it up. I'll have directions on both healthy freezer meals and then we have two that qualify for a bake. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't call them. One could be more of a casserole. You'll see. All of these ingredients would qualify as gluten-free. Of course, for gluten-free, you have to really eyeball and know your brands and read your labels and make sure you're getting gluten-free variations. All of them but three are dairy-free and they are all low-carb, keto, and Trim Healthy Mama S meals friendly. You know, I can't check all the boxes on all the food things and I'm just a mama in my kitchen, but these large family recipes have been highly requested, so I hope you like them. Let's get cooking, and we'll look at my whiteboard in a minute and, and see what's going down, but gotta, gotta get this ground beef cooking first. Had that heating up, and you can see evidence of that, so that's why I was like, oh, I better quit chatting in my camera, and I best get this ground beef in there. It's gonna sizzle. Okay, now I'm gonna get this lid on. Okay, so I will read you my whiteboard list. Of course, my uh, big freezer cooking days go so much faster when I am working off my own large family freezer meal packs. I have a whole collection with packs one through six. If you are interested in those, the link will be down in the description below and you can always use the promo code HELLO20 to take 20% off your first purchase in my large family table shop. Anywho, today, these recipes are not in a pack, but you can get all of these, someone's messaging me. All of these recipes are available for free over on largefamilytable.com. And of course the link is gonna be in the description below to take you to all of these. Anywho, what we are making is we are gonna do a spicy Italian sausage and peppers bake. We're gonna do peppered lemon chicken. That'll be instant pot or slow cooker. We're gonna do cilantro lime chicken and that meat can be used for tacos or fajitas or for wraps, fantastic. We're gonna do a low carb broccoli and cheddar soup. We're gonna do a low carb cheesy and cauliflower soup. We're gonna do red pepper meatball and the way that I like to do those, the meatballs will be all prepped ahead, etc. but they can be served over cauliflower rice or brown rice. My children would have it over brown rice, I'd have it over cauliflower rice. We're also gonna do low carb taco soup and we're gonna be doing a low carb beef and cheesy cauliflower bake. So all of these except it's the low carb beef and cheesy cauliflower bake, the cheesy cauliflower soup and the broccoli cheddar soup, obviously those are not dairy free. But the other ones that I listed, the spicy Italian sauce, I won't read them for you again, but you can do the math. The other ones that are dairy free, and also those of you who have been wanting large family dairy free recipes and helps, even though I am not a dairy free expert, I have one of my good mama friends doing some work for me over on largefamilytable.com. She's gonna be like our dairy free expert because she has been dairy free herself. For, for many, many decades, knows a lot about it. So be looking over there. We now have a dairy-free section that'll have more updates coming up. Okay, so I am cooking this ground beef. This is gonna be for the low-carb beef and cauliflower bake and also the taco soup. Then I have some ground beef I'm using for the meatballs. I got the chicken for the lemon chicken and the cilantro lime chicken and I have the Italian sausages. So yeah, I'm hopeful that even though I'm doing 20 large family healthy freezer meals, uh, it's not gonna take too long, famous last words, because I have more freezer cooking I'm doing once I get these. I'm kind of dividing my freezer cooking videos up today so that you can have this one 
with the healthy and then if you want another one with the sanity <laughs> in my next video it's gonna be three different types of freezer sandwiches I'm looking at my list some sausage breakfast muffins whole bunch of banana bread whole bunch of protein bites and whole bunch of homemade granola bars that are also freezer friendly so if you if you like any of that stuff get it all here come on back and see that but but let's get cooking So what I was just doing there was getting one of those pasture-raised chickens in my 14-quart GoWise pressure cooker. The reason that I'm doing that is for a few of these meals. I need chicken broth and I don't have any other chicken broth, so I need to cook a chicken and make some chicken broth, but that will be fine because then the meat from that chicken I will bag up and I will use that or I have different kids that will use that chicken for snacks or to go along with lunch with some fruits and veggies and it'll, it'll get used, don't worry. But I also went ahead and put 12 cups of water in there because I need at least 12 cups of chicken broth. It'll make more than that. We'll have some good, healthy chicken broth in the works. So now I have a bazillion peppers, whole, whole lot of colored peppers that need chopped up. I could have got a better deal on these on this pepper trio at Aldi or Costco even, has a pretty good deal most of the time. Uh, but got them at Walmart, I feel like I paid just a little more, but that's okay because Walmart put my groceries in my trunk for me and that's what matters. So I want to chop all of these. I know several ladies have asked me recently about using a food processor. See, we're gonna, we're gonna sit and chat and chop, okay? Um, and I have one, it's in my cabinet. Thing is, I just like to sit and chop my vegetables. Uh, it's therapeutic. Some ladies like to iron, some ladies like to do laundry in general or garden. Sorry, that the noise is probably overpowering my voice there. Uh, we just have different things we like to do. Some like to dust, some like to vacuum. You know, we have many things we have to do, but then there's some things you just really get a kick out of doing. I just like sitting, sitting and chopping. I like sitting. Sitting is my favorite. So we are going to sit and chop all these peppers, and then we need to chop up some onion and some cilantro. And I went ahead and you know I've done this in different videos. I wrote down what I think my time frame is going to be for the actions I need to do. And I'm thinking I'm going to come in about three hours start to finish. Hopefully Jay Morrell will not double that. About three hours start to finish if I don't get too chatty, but that also includes the process of, you know, I'm cooking, batch cooking ground beef for a few of these meals and I'm cooking a chicken, I'm chopping all my veggies, certainly ways you could streamline it, but if I really do come out with 20 large family, healthy freezer meals at the end of this time in three hours, that's great. Oh, I didn't tell you yet. So the total cost of everything that I needed to make these freezer meals was $175. So that breaks down to, let's see, do my little math, about $8.75 per meal. And so for my family of 10, to have a healthy freezer meal for $8.75, that's, that's really good. There are some things I had on hand, like I did already, and I know that this will impact price. I know it also depends on where you live as far as what your actual grocery prices are. Again, in the blog post that goes with all this cooking, I, I broke down all my nerdy math. Anywho, um, I already had the ground beef. Now, the chicken broth I'm making, I'm not counting that chicken meat because I'm not using it for these meals. I could have bought a couple boxes of organic chicken broth. I could have bought the best deal on ground beef that I could find at Walmart. I did have to buy boneless, skinless chicken breast and all my veggies and lots of cheese and other items. So I felt like the 175 is a pretty fair amount across the board because you might have chicken that you could use for these healthy freezer meals in your freezer. You might have ground beef in your freezer. You might have one and need to buy the other. You might need to buy every single thing. I had to buy broccoli and a ton of cauliflower. Maybe you have some cauliflower in your freezer. Anyway, I'm gonna wash these peppers. 
and then we'll get to chop it. That is spell. A no, we did not. Very long time finding basins. We were having trouble. Good. I'm glad you found them. You know what we're gonna make? What? what? We're gonna make homemade granola bars. That's oh. what I needed raisins and chocolate chips and stuff for. Does yeah, that sound fun? Right. Travis and the kids are home. You know, lots of people ask, where are the kids? Why are you doing all this cooking? Well, again, they've been out, piano, Walmart, bank, post office, doing many things. Most of the kids, some of them are home doing other things. Anywho, the little ones and a team were out. And so they got items for in my next freezer meal video and for our family, for our freezer. We're gonna do homemade granola bars. I needed Travis to pick up some more um, like dried coconut flakes and some craisins as we call them. So they're bringing all this grocery in, groceries in and classic YouTube kids questions. I know, excellent, put, a, put them in the pantry, honey. My goodness. When they brought all the groceries in, they wanted to know if we had to put them out on the table so I can film them. So no. Just put them away for now. There were a few more baking type items, just odds and ends I needed for the lunch freezer meals, which is perfect because on Friday, we are gonna go see, not tomorrow, but the next day, we're going on an all day trip to Washington, D.C. We're gonna ride the Metro. We haven't done that in a long time. Now our van, yes, I was gonna tell him, we're gonna take the Metro because our old van, I could always, even though it was 16 passengers, I could drive right into DC, I could park, um, even at the bottom of the Ronald Reagan building, that's like my favorite place to park, but now with our van, the Mercedes Sprinter that has like the six foot walk around room inside, I can't park that in DC. So we're gonna park at the Vienna Metro, that's the Metro I always rode as a kid, and then we'll take that into DC. It's been many years since we rode the Metro. Several of these kids have never rode the Metro, so it'll be a really fun experience. All that to say, we'll be taking those granola bars that I'm gonna do in my next video on Friday when we have our DC field trip day. Okay, here are all these chopped peppers going in lovely recipes now. Well, reality check-in. Here we are. It's now almost eight o'clock, the time that I thought I'd be done with this. And I feel like I've barely moved. We, uh, we had a storm of kids come in and they wanted to eat. Can you believe that? It happens. So now I'm like, okay, 
We've, we've done dinner. That's what happens in the middle of my freezer cooking time, and I'm sure it happens in the middle of yours too. So I did two taco bakes that I had set out last night to defrost while I'm doing these low carb meals, of course. And uh, we served that up for dinner, and then we got in a whole bunch of good conversation, a whole bunch of good chatting. And you know as a mama, you wanna take advantage of those times. So now, I think, after that break, I'm getting back into freezer cooking. I've got about it's probably about four pounds of ground beef here looking at me. I'm going to add in, remember, we're, we make lots. I'm gonna add in about four tablespoons of minced garlic. Got my minced garlic. Gonna add in a few tablespoons of parsley flakes. Gonna add in my uh, shaky cheese, about a cup of shaky cheese. Gonna actually add in some heavy cream and some eggs too. Salt and pepper and mix these up. And I'm going to pre-cook these meatballs this go round. Still having my meatball making party. So I just got that one pan of meatballs. I didn't even count how many I got on that pan. So I guess we'll count them when they come out. Gonna get another pan of meatballs made up now. And might even be a third pan after that. We will just line these up and get them cooked. They only take about 20 minutes or so baking them this way and I've got plenty of other things to do in the meantime. I was letting the meat that I had cooked in the roaster oven, it was about eight to 10 pounds. I was letting it drain and start to cool a bit and we will put that in the meals we need to make. With that, I know I'm doing, because so I've got to remember this, I've got meat hands so I can't go poking around at my list, but I know I was doing a taco soup <laughs> and I like to have the ground beef pre-cooked for that and I was pre-cooking ground beef for that beef and cheddar cauliflower bake. Several of you have been so helpful telling me about using ice cream scoops for cookies and even meatballs and I had one of those nice fancy dancy like spring-loaded scoops but kid broke it. <laughs> it happens. So they thought, oh what's this? So we do need to go cooking utensil shopping. Maybe we will take an, uh, I almost said an Aldi field trip that too. Maybe we will take an Ikea field trip at some point this spring and go up and get some more, some fresh cooking things. Y'all know I need some fresh baking pans. I guess let me know in the comments below just some practical kitchen tools that I might actually use. Again, I get comments often about a food processor and I have one here just a just a sitting. So some things I'm just a little hard-headed. I like to just chop my peppers and roll my meatballs with my hands but I don't mind getting different tools because sometimes those tools become my favorite things. Like when I got my instant pot a few years ago I was like well I love my slow cooker. I don't know and now I know how much I love my electric pressure cookers. I do though still find times where the slow cooker is just best. And so case in point, let's say on a Sunday going to church and I know I can put dinner in or lunch in the slow cooker and have it set up so that when we get home it's done. Well, if I didn't do that, when we got home I could throw stuff in the Instant Pot, we would still be eating about an hour later than we would want to. I'm, I'm done with these meatballs. That's why my hands have paused for a moment. <laughs> so I need to get another pan. Gabriel, honey, get me out another baking pan and then spray it with this spray and set it in front of me while I got my meat hands, okay? Now, that also being said, I could put dinner in the Instant Pot and we can go out to Taekwondo and it can be done in a much shorter time. I think, um, see that drawer? Oh, perfect, if 
found a bigger one. That's good. Well, I think I'm pretty good on metal mixing bowls for now, but I know these bacon pans, like they're, they're from the farmhouse. <laughs> and we've been here in the forest for three years, so definitely could use an upgrade on baking pans and going to Ikea is always a fun idea. So with these meatballs that we are doing, of course, and I've done this, I did this this fall with some turkey meatballs that I had in my other low carb and instant pot freezer meal videos that I did, I think in October, um, I prepped a whole bunch of turkey parm meatballs and then I put them in separate little baggies, pre-cooked them, put them in separate little baggies, and then I used them for like snacks and sauces and such. You can also do that with these meatballs. However, I am making these today with a goal in mind of doing this particular red pepper instant pot or slow cooker meal that takes meatballs. This is a good base meatball recipe that you could use in many, many things. And what I did with the turkey meatballs is I could just set them out to defrost in the refrigerator overnight, warm them up in the microwave, or drop them into some sauces. Lots, lots of good ways you can use them. I also shared on Instagram and Facebook how we've been eyeballing new washers and dryers. Let me know which washer and dryer sets seem to be your favorite and work well. You've seen in my recent Week in the Life video, I shared more about it and I took you out and we, I showed you different ones I was looking at. But while I'm chatting making meatballs, I'm still thinking. Sometimes we think of things and then Travis and I go out and we research like I know we want to go look at couches. So we haven't talked about dishwashers since last time we were out looking at them. Our stuff is still working, functional, but we know it's a coming. And we would much rather do some research, do what you all tell us to do. We want to do the little bit of a, a quality upgrade with our next purchases. We've done really well getting, you know, the cheapest. And those items have worked well over the years. But now we want to see if we can just do a little upgrade and if we get a little more mileage out of them, you know how that goes. Okay, so here's a look at, these are these are big, thick and hearty meatballs, a la J. Morrell, right? <laughs> these are two more pans. You can see where Gabriel was a little generous. It's hard to figure out how to use that cooking spray at first, but he did help his mama and get the pan and spray it for me, and I appreciate that. So what I'm doing is I am spooning a tablespoon of olive oil over these sausages, and uh, then I'm gonna put peppers and onions and some seasonings on here too. And I've been whittling down this tub of minced garlic from Walmart. Earlier, uh -huh. when I took a bite of one of those peppers here and put it in a bag of me. Yeah, like that Amelia one. was helping me. You were eating all the peppers, weren't you? Yes, but what about the peppers? Um, well, one time when I ate, like, some, it was not all of them, but some, mm -hmm. of they, for some reason, they tasted like onions. Well, it could be, you know, I didn't chop the onions till after. Sometimes when you're chopping, okay, mama, lessons for other little girls watching. Sometimes when you're chopping veggies, you want to cut your onions last right because otherwise if you cut your onions first and then you cut your peppers it can get that onion taste but i cut all those peppers first and then i chop the onions but even the smell of onions can kind of get on things that might be why but amelia she even asked for she had a bunch with the taco bake and that's what's nice about the taco bake although that's not considered one of our low carb recipes because she just piled on a bunch of red peppers yellow peppers orange peppers a little bit of extra dollop of sour cream and shredded cheese and she was ready to go, but then she wanted a whole baggie of colored peppers as her snack. Okay, so here's how the pans of the sausage are looking right now. I've just done the tablespoon of olive oil and then two tablespoons each of minced garlic. Now I'm going to shake on just some oregano leaves very lightly. I'm just doing a few shakes, I would say 
That's not even a fourth of a tablespoon. <laughs> not very much, okay, okay. And then we're gonna do about the same amount of basil leaves, just very lightly. And then I'm gonna shake on just a little bit of parsley. Again, all of this is very light. Now we're gonna load it up with peppers and onions. And I'm just going to share this amongst the three pans. Now I'm going to do the same with peppers. I said in this recipe it was the equivalent of six chopped peppers, so that makes it about two in each pan. And then you can do this, of course, when you go to cook it on your cooking day, but Lord only knows what I'll be doing on my cooking day, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some salt and pepper on the top of these. Now, what would be perfect to go along with these, of course, is steamed vegetables like broccoli or collie rice. For children, brown rice, quinoa. If you're doing more of a trim healthy mama and you want to make it a crossover, you could have those items as well. Or if you're doing more of whole foods, that's it. So many different ways to eat. Then you could of course mix in and serve it with quinoa or brown rice. Yes, okay, so here's our beautiful rainbow pans. So I'm going to now hop over to do the beef and cheddar cauliflower bake. I'm washing out one of my bowls. I feel like I'm being a little too overly optimistic about the size of this bowl because uh, it's one of my bowls on the smaller end that we might outgrow pretty quickly, but I'm already here, almost done rinsing it out. So we'll give it a go and see if I can keep it contained. Zion is helping me, he's wrapping up um, the sausage and pepper bakes. I will say, whenever you do bakes, Zion's going out now to take them. Thanks, Zion. Whenever you do bakes, the wrapping, of course, prep work takes time, putting it together takes time, but then you have to allow yourself time, which I, I always forget this, to actually wrap it and then get it in the freezer. And whenever you're managing multiple meals going down, sometimes that little bit of time is like, ah, it just feels real draining. So I said, Zion, help your mama out. So he's helping his mama out. I only have, I had that bake, and then I'm doing this beef and cheddar cauliflower bake, and then everything else is gonna be bagged meals, but those were some prep work as well. So with this ground beef that I have here, it's about eight or so pounds. Half of the ground beef is going to be set aside for the taco soup. Half of it is going in this beef and cheddar cauliflower bake. Yes and amen. So of course my, uh, my dishes, my dishes are growing. That's okay. I do, I wash things as we go, but then there's some items I don't need again, and those are what gets stacked up. That bowl there could have found its purpose again, but that's okay. So this is the ground beef that I did in the roaster. Going to get this into my cute little medium-sized bowl. And then what else we are going to put in this is I have, it's also another cute little thing. Um, I like to get the big 52 ounce bags of cauliflower from Walmart. Of course, I think Costco usually have, well they have it in bigger bags there too. But Walmart always has the broccoli. This one Walmart where I did my grocery pickup just had the smaller bag. So we'll use several of those. We're gonna put uh, five eggs in it and we're going to put some heavy cream. We're going to put cheese, we're going to put the cauliflower, we're going to mix it all together, make wonderful things happen, pour it in baking pans, get it labeled. This meat has cooled now and we'll get it labeled, get it in the outside freezers. I haven't filmed a large family meals of the week um, probably for the last two weeks and no real reason other than I've been filming other things and sometimes it's hard to juggle multiple videos because you know some of them I do over many days. Anyway, just with all the shopping and the freezer cooking I've been getting done, 
I just said I'll just take a few week break from doing the large family meals of the week videos but those are coming back and my next one that I do will be with many of these meals also with these meals like I mentioned all the recipes will be over on largefamilytable.com and in, pro in process pictures always a question I get what's well, great when you make them but what do you do with them so how I actually cook them and serve them all of those will be over on the blog so now I'm gonna add in my little cutie pie, as we would call them, bags of cauliflower. I'm going to do four of these 12 ounce bags, so that'll be 48 ounces. But if you can get the big 52 ounce bag, then those four extra ounces won't hurt a bit. I'm going to put in two cups of heavy cream. So obviously this is not one of the dairy-free recipes. This should be a gluten-free recipe, but of course you've always gotta, I've heard you have to watch your cheese with that. I'm looking to see some cheeses, I've heard they can be dusted with flour and such to keep them from sticking. I don't know all the rationale behind it. Again, in our family, we are not gluten-free, but I have some very close friends and their children who are. So make sure that you're using a cheese if you do this recipe that is truly gluten-free as well. I'm going to do four cups of woo, shredded cheddar cheese. Now we're going to mix it all up and get it in the pans. Here is what the beef and cheddar cauliflower bake looks all mixed up. Again, that recipe will be over on the blog too. Now I'm going to Hopefully get two pans full here. I'm gonna just use my measuring cup. Or not, or I'm gonna dump it. We'll see. See how wild and crazy I'm feeling. Okay, there's one. I think what happened was when Zion got busy wrapping those other three pans for me, I moved down to this corner. I'm like, why am I way over here on this little counter space? No, honey, I'm talking to my invisible friends and my camera. Kids are asking if I'm talking to them. Okay, so here are how the two pans of the beef and cheddar cauliflower bakes look now. I'm gonna have my handy dandy wrapping assistant come out and wrap these for me and get them in the freezer. Yay. So it's a brand new day. Does this even surprise you? So, so full of hope. And we had a great day yesterday. Let this just be an encouragement to you mamas that a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. And I was telling myself that when I laid down with Benjamin last night to nurse him and get him settled for bed. And then I just started to go to sleep myself. So I had Zion. I was like, Zion, come here, come help your mama. And he packed up the meat I had batch cooked and the things that I had out, got them in bags, got them in the refrigerator for me. And he did the dishes. These are a few dishes left and new dishes for the day. New day, new dishes. Anywho, yeah. When my next large family freezer meal packs come out that have a lot of these recipes in them, cooking those recipes will go a little smoother. But this go round, as I'm working out the kinks, this is just how it goes. So yesterday became a freezer meal prep day. Mega freezer meal prep. And we batch, I'm reading my list, we batch cooked ground beef, did all that chopping for the peppers and the onions. I did those three sausage and pepper bakes, and I did those two beef and cheddar cauliflower bakes. Oh, and I did a ton of meatballs. So today, we are to the bag meals. So now we're gonna get those bag meals going after I've got half a cup of coffee left and I'm gonna eat some lunch. We got our school and stuff done this morning, some household things along with that. And so Liam, Amelia, and Daniel are on the deck playing now. Got all their stuffed animals out there. We'll think about that later. And other kids are doing stuff in the house right now and Benjamin is down for his nap. So it's a good time to get these finished today. And that's how I do it. So, because moms will say, JMRL, I don't know how I'm gonna get this freezer cooking done. Well, you make your plan. You list it all out on your whiteboard what you wanna do. And then as kids come in, as dinner's conversation runs long, and that's my heart as a mama is those opportunities when things do go off the rails but in a positive way. You got a bunch of kids who wanna have some deep conversation, you take those opportunities, right? Baby wants to snuggle extra snuggly. So when those times happen around your cooking, 
you follow your mama heart and do what you have to do for your family and then you just adapt the food so I'm adapting this food on this brand new day still gonna get it done still getting all these meals in the freezer go team go So the kids have been joking about this chicken in this container today. It looks like some kind of, I think Naomi told Gabriel it was a chicken brain in here. So it looks like some kind of science experiment gone wrong. Now what this is, is it's the whole hen that I batch cooked in the pressure cooker and then when I ran out of steam, I had Zion put it in this lovely container. I got this at the restaurant supply store when I went there with my friend Ashley from Large Family Management. She's got a channel up here on YouTube also. So anyway, these are super convenient containers. So I got my chicken broth made though. Yay, I'm gonna pick the chicken off the bones here too. I'll probably just gonna use the broth for the recipes I need and we'll get back to that chicken. And so many of you ask me about these little freezer meal bag stands. These are the coolest thing. I always have my link in the description below for these. Anyway, you just clip your bags on the side and it holds them up nice and helpful. You, the bags can, depending on how much you jam in them and weigh them down, which I'm the queen of jamming stuff up and weighing it down. The bags can start to slip. So I have clips that I put on top sometimes when I can find them to reinforce. I'm just gonna take a moment here, be a good little soldier and get my bags labeled. start with the taco soup first because I have the ground beef done for that. I have no idea why my kitchen door is now left open, but I'm gonna close it. I got kids going in and out. Weather report is it looks like it's gonna rain, so all the clothes baskets of stuffed animals have now moved to the dining room. So I'm opening several cans of diced tomatoes because we're gonna need those anyway. I got rid of our can opener that I know. What, honey? Okay, get what you need. They're now going back outside. You, you know how this works. It's, it's, it's not raining, the sun's shining. And I'm like, no, hold, hold up. Hold up, wait a minute. We're gonna be in the van for hours tomorrow. Get your little selves back out of the sunshine until I see considerable rain. You okay? You got your puppy? You got your bananas? And I gave him a whole bunch of bananas. We got a bunch of bananas back there. Take those bananas. Daddy's back and outside too. So let mama open these cans. Oh, I know, that's what I was gonna tell you. So I got rid of the white can opener that was in all my old videos that Travis and I got. I think we got it like right after we got married. I remember going to Walmart with, um, you know, like little wedding checks, little wedding gift money, and getting a few starter apartment type things we needed. We got that can opener. It looked grubby after over 20 years, but it still worked. Still got all my little cans, my big cans. So I got this Black & Decker about a year ago and it fights me. And sometimes I just, and I got rid of my old good trusty can opener. And I hate it when I do little things like that. Like, ugh. even though it looks grubby, I should have done that. And I remember my grand, uh, my one granddad in particular having can openers and kitchen appliances that, I don't know, had to have been 30 or so years old or older, the things still worked, but I remember them looking grubby. So I was just trying to not look grubby, but on days like today, I'm like, I just, I should have kept my good old trusty can opener. Because this ground beef was cooked yesterday and put in the refrigerator, just keeps broken up a little bit. And I'm gonna put it in these bags here. This is four pounds of pre-cooked ground beef. That way, the idea with this is that whenever we want to have slow cooker taco soup or instant pot taco soup, the meat is already done, everything else is already in there. 
and it's just one of those like dump and go meals. That is always helpful. And you think you don't need them, but then when you have them, I know that's how I'll be, you know. Oh, I don't need them. Oh, I'll cook every night. And I'm always so thankful to have a ton of meals prepped and ready to go. Okay, I might be able to just dump the rest of this in. It took a long time yesterday to get the ground beef done in the roaster oven. I honestly could have done it quicker on the stove top, but then I would have had to have st stood there with it and babysat it, and I babysat it, babysit it, and uh, didn't want to do that either. Oh, I'm gonna need to wash this all day. So the, the roaster oven was passive, and I like to use that, especially if I'm doing like 20 or 30 pounds of ground beef or bunch of chicken or something at one time. It's really helpful for that. We got in about two pounds of ground beef in each, each of these bags. Now I'm going to put in a can of diced tomatoes in each. Actually, I was going to use, I had some of the diced tomatoes with green chilies. You can use, of course, any diced tomatoes. Will do. And then I did have some beef broth, yay. Ready to go. I could have just poured half of this in one bag and half of it in the other. I only realized that once I'm almost done. I'm gonna do a second can of diced tomatoes in each bag. Shoot, I had something mixed together I did not want mixed together. Well, it won't hurt. The, uh, during our pickup last night, the cilantro and the onions got mixed together. Oops. So, might end up with some a little cilantro in my taco soup, but I won't complain. We'll pick around it because I had a totally different recipe for that cilantro. It's what happens in a real life mama kitchen, right? Whoopsie. I do my dry spices first before I get my minced garlic going. So I'm doing a tablespoon of cumin in each and then a tablespoon of chili powder in each. That'll make it very close to homemade taco seasoning flavor. And then I'm going to do a tablespoon of minced garlic in each. Then I'm gonna put a bunch of cheese in each. And so yes, this cheese will just melt all in the taco soup. But once the taco soup is done, you could then put on for each individual bowl or on the pot of taco soup, you could put a little bit more shredded cheese and you can put on some sour cream. So here are both bags of low carb taco soup that'll go in the freezer. So now I'm looking at my meatballs and I'm thinking I must be missing a pack of meatballs or I didn't make as many as I needed to. So I'm only going to get one of these red pepper meatball meals done because we like a lot of meatballs and eyeballing these, I'm thinking, well, that's only enough for one bag. Now I just realized I wrote on another bag and I'm removing the meatballs from one bag and putting them in another bag. I guess I could have used this same bag. Oh well, that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Wally. Yes. You got your banana peels? Yeah, two banana peels melt. No, they don't melt, sweetie. Okay. What you doing? Uh, oh, yeah, does that look yummy? The heavy cream, it's got a picture of strawberry shortcake on it. Red pepper meatballs, serve it over collie rice, serve it over brown rice, here you go. Now these next two soups that we're gonna do, one is gonna be a low carb broccoli cheddar and then the other one is a cheesy cauliflower. Soup. So with either of these, you're gonna see, we're gonna put the stuff in the bag. Then, of course, when you wanna cook it, like all of these meals, you're gonna thaw it in the refrigerator the night before, dump it in my slow cooker the next morning, the next day at lunchtime at some point. Um, anyway, when it gets close to its cooking time being done, I've been using my immersion blender more and more. I'll show you the $20 one I picked up. Then I just stick my blender in there and give it a little whirl and it whips everything up nicely. So here's the, it's a Hamilton Beach. So far, it has worked well. It is one of those items that I think I got over a year ago in a grocery haul or those Walmart grocery pickup orders. I saw it, I'm like, oh, I could probably use that. 
but it's really just been in recent months that I've been getting some good use out of it. So this is the little attachment that I've been using whenever I whip up soups. There is also this little whisk attachment and it's it has this as we were talking about kitchen items earlier this has turned out to be convenient and useful for me so far i've been using it i've been talking to it i've been getting to know it so i will try to link one of these for you guys as well i'm gonna do this broccoli cheddar soup now okay i'm gonna start dropping my broccoli in so this is just half a stick of butter in each bag. Then we're going to put half a block of cream cheese in each bag and then three cups of heavy cream in each bag and then some chicken broth. So here is what it looks like in the bag. Gonna get it all sealed up now. Okay, we're back at it. You wouldn't know in YouTube time, I actually took a break, went and did some other things. Now I'm, I'm back, getting back, gonna get this done. Okay, so now we're gonna do the cheesy cauliflower. Okay, so here are both of the low-carb, cheesy cauliflower soups that are going in the freezer, too. I'm going to do the pepper, lemon, chicken, and the chicken cilantro lime here in a moment. Since I had a little mix-up with the cilantro and the onions, which, I mean, I guess onions could go in that. I just haven't put onions in it before, but I'm going to pick out the cilantro pieces from that bag. But I also have some dried cilantro, so I thought I might just get creative and mix it up a little bit. And with the chicken cilantro lime, it's great to mix up and then have on, of course if you're doing low carb, it could be on low carb wraps, it could be on lettuce wraps, it could be on salad. Kids of course can have it on tacos, taco shells, you can have it over quinoa, rice, over cauli rice. It's just a good, flavorful chicken to have and use for many different things. And then many times the chicken that I'm working with when I do these kind of bo uh, bones, yeah, do these kind of meals is just already frozen from a bag from Walmart. I don't take the time, of course, to defrost it. Sometimes I will get chicken from Aldi that hasn't been frozen yet, and that looks prettier. But this is real life mama throw and go freezer meal cooking, right? We don't mind. And this is a 10 pound bag of chicken and I just divide it up between the three bags. I'm adding in the lime juice. I did have some onion in this and the cilantro. So since it is mixed, we are saved, is okay. So now we're gonna do our peppered lemon chicken. I have three kids cleaning up outside now. And then they were gonna come in, wash their hands and work on their bedrooms. They've been playing all day. They wanna know, what do they have to do to come in? And I said, pick up everything outside, wash your hands and go upstairs and pick up your bedrooms and then you can be in. Okay, that's it, we did it. Sun is still a shining. Well, it's 548, but yay to the time change and the sun's staying out longer, right Amelia? Amelia's having some yogurts. So if you want these recipes to make these 20 healthy freezer meals, head over to largefamilytable.com. The link will be down in the description below and you'll not only see the in process pictures, but you'll see pictures of what it looks like when we actually cook them up and eat them. Thank you for encouraging me as I do all this cooking and thank you for sticking with me. So now I'm going to take a rest with Benjamin and then we're making protein bites and granola bars that can also go in the freezer 
and a whole bunch of make ahead sandwiches getting ready for our field trip to Washington DC tomorrow that you keep hearing about and just to have in the freezer for all those days that we really need them. Okay friends, I'll talk to you in those comments below. Bye bye.